Hi, good afternoon. So this week I processed seven chickens and I know that a lot of you want to learn how to can your own meat. So, so join me. You'll see how easy it is. Here we have the seven chickens cut up. We have the full legs, the wings, the chicken breasts, and the chicken tenders, which is the underside of the breasts on the bones, in this tray. And over here, we have got the chicken carcasses and the necks in a pot. So what I'm going to be doing is boiling the chicken carcasses, making a chicken stock. And then I will peel the meat off of the bones and use the meat for other recipes. You see the yellow? This is the fat on the meat. Uh, very young chickens don't have that much fat, if any at all. Uh, when the chickens get a little bit older, already six months old, uh, you can see a lot of fat. So I remove the fat. The next step is to cook your food as you normally would. So earlier today, this afternoon, I made some pineapple chicken thighs, honey mustard jumpsticks. Those flakes are the actual mustard powder. I made my own uh, mustard. Spicy wings. I made my own sauces for everything. And these are chicken fillets, fried chicken fillets, and um, cut up pieces of chicken to be used in, you know, whatever dishes I want to, like Chinese chicken or any other thing that requires chopped up chicken. In here, I've got the cooked chicken carcasses in the chicken stock. Okay, I put all of the food in jars. Just to give you an idea, these are pint jars. And this, these are two thighs with the pineapple and sauce, for example, in that jar. And these are wings with the sauce. These are two drumsticks with a little bit of sauce. These are the chicken chunks. And these are the chicken fillets. And I'm just gonna put lids on them and then put them in the pot. Now, inside this pot, we still have the uh, chicken carcasses. I have to debone those. And, uh, and then I can put the, the meat from the chicken carcass into jars and then put the stock into jars. So here I have a pressure cooker. It's actually the same large pot that you saw me can the tomatoes in, and it's the same large pot that you saw me um, make the uh, chicken broth in. It's the exact same thing. The difference between this pot and a regular canner pot or a regular pot is its lid. Okay, this lid has got a rubber seal around the whole lid. And then on the other side, it's also very heavy. On the other side, it has got a, a valve, a pressure valve. And it has a way to tighten the lid down. Let's turn this. You close it all the way. So in this particular pot, I know how much pressure I am using by the number of twists that I twist once it's actually, you know, starts to get hard, you turn it a number of twists. And that's it. The main difference between a regular pot and a pressure cooker is the type of lid. Now, I have two large pots 
and two small pots. And thankfully I have two stove tops that are completely separate. So I'm going to be running them at the same time. And now that I've completely confused you about the pots, I'm going to start filling them. So I'm going to do these little ones first. I'm going to fill this up. First you have to make sure that the lids are on. It's a good idea to check because otherwise you're going to spill the contents. You don't fill the pot completely with water. You don't cover the lids in the pressure canning. You only put in enough water to make sure that it doesn't burn or that the water won't run out because the pressure cooker will release steam when it gets too hot. Now I have the water and I'm just going to put the lid on. I will not tighten it yet. I'm going to put it on the stove and I'm going to let it come to a boil and then I'm going to tighten the lid. So these outside are boiling. I'm going to tighten this up. Okay, so these are all my processed jars. If you notice, some of them are still boiling. That's because I finished the canning job this, this today, this morning. Um, you can see these are cloudy. That's basically the, uh, the uh, excess um, moisture that was in the meat that carried the, the excess fats with it. And it's okay, that's on the inside, that's fine. So we've got the drumsticks, and then we've got the wings, and uh, over here we've got the, you know, the thighs, and here we've got the, uh, the fillets. Did you hear that pop? And then we've got the broth, which just came out. So this is it. This is the canned goods once they're done once everything is cooled off completely then i shall put them all away so you might be asking why why do you do this why do you put so much effort in when you can just freeze the chicken defrost it and then cook it however you want why why do you need to can it well the answer is simple um why do you buy pre-made food why do you go to the freezer section of the grocery store and buy pre-made food that all you have to do is pop it in the oven and heat it up so for me that's what canning is uh, with the big exception that i don't need a freezer i don't need any more energy in order to keep the food edible i don't have to worry about it going bad and when I want to heat it up, well, it's already at room temperature. So all I have to do is stick it in the sun a little bit, put it in my sun oven. I can keep it in the car, put it on the dashboard. And especially since it's vacuum sealed, putting it on the dashboard, is going to get really hot very fast. And I'll have warm food. Uh, another thing you're going to ask is, wait a second. I thought you're not supposed to have any air in the jar. You're not supposed to have any air space. That's true. You're not. Uh, you're not supposed to have bubbles, air bubbles. You're not supposed to have, you know, a way for botulism spores to grow. So when you hear these pops in the lids, that means that all the air has been removed from the jar and the suction that's caused by the air release is what pulls the cap in. And that's what seals it. No more air can get in. Once the air is out, it can't get in. So all the contents of that jar are in a vacuum. <clears throat> I do want to add that Although water bath canning and pressure canning has the exact same process, the only difference is a pressure canner is used and you have to follow the instructions of your specific pressure canner. Each pressure canner is different and therefore following the instructions for that pressure canner is crucial because if you do not follow the instructions for that particular canner, you might not reach the pressure required to kill the botulism spores so it's really important to 
know and understand how to use the pressure canner that you are using. Another thing I would like to mention is that the, the vacuum sealing on jars that come out of a pressure canner is much quicker than in a water bath canner and that's because the temperature is much higher and the temperature difference is basically forcing the air out of the jars a lot sooner. And when you're taking the jars out of the pressure canner, you must absolutely make sure that you do not touch the caps in any way that would inadvertently cause the little clicket center to pop inwards. Because if it's so sensitive and you can accidentally cause it to go pop when not all the air is out simply because you're pushing. So then there's pressure built up on the inside, not enough that you can detect, but there is still pressure there, which is why it is sealed and the air is still in there. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that when you are canning in a pressure canner, let the jars cool somewhat, if not completely, while still in the canner. It won't hurt anything if you just leave them there until everything is perfectly cooled down. Just take the lid off, uh, not immediately. You have to release the lid slowly because too much of the temperature difference can break the glasses. Now, another thing that is very different between water bath canning and pressure canner canning is the jars. It is not a good idea to reuse store-bought jars in a pressure canner. It is true, those jars may not withstand the pressure and they may break inside the canner. I would not reuse lids that have been um, processed in a pressure canner because the temperatures are so high that the seal may be broken down further than it would have been in a water bath canner. So make sure that everything is new and make sure that you have jars that are specific for canning. I normally like to cook my meat before I can it. The reason is because it's tastier. You can put the meat in raw just to preserve it, but then when you go to add it to food, it's going to just taste bland unless you are putting some sort of a sauce or something on it. And I'm not, I'm not canning meat just to have it. I'm canning meals. I'm canning entrees. I'm canning so that I can have quick, ready to eat, no fuss. Uh, as I did my canning, I, ha I used fewer dishes, I had less clean up, and I have a countertop full of ready-made meals for the next month. I could have a ready-made meal every day for the next month, and it requires very little effort on my part. How much time did it take me total start to finish? So... Yesterday at around 1 p.m. is when I started cutting the chicken and preparing it. And by 4 o'clock, the chicken had been cut, prepared, cooked, and jarred. So that's three hours for everything. And then all I had left to do was can it. So it's three hours from taking the chickens out of the refrigerator, cutting them up, and getting them jarred with the lids on them. And then I had to, um, I had to go out, I had things to do. And then it was after 8 p.m., I came back to it, and I canned four pots of jars, put the leftovers in the refrigerator, took them out today, let them reach room temperature, and then I did the last two pots. So I have a total of 
of six canning pots. An advantage of doing the canning at nighttime is that the daytime temperatures are a lot warmer than the nighttime temperatures. So that was fine. Waiting for them wasn't such a big deal. I watched movies. Oh, good grief. So I saw two movies last night. Um, so, you know, I don't count the actual processing time once the jars are in the pots as my as part of my canning time because I can go and do other things. So that's it. Until next time.